In a nutshell, the Admiral Wilson Leak, which is also known as the Wilson Davis Leak, is a 15-page document which leaked to the public in mid-2018, and most of which is allegedly the transcript of a conversation which occurred in the car park of a major Las Vegas defence contractor in 2002 between a then recently retired Navy Rear Admiral, who was also the former Deputy Director of Intelligence for the Joint Chief of Staff, Thomas Wilson, and scientist Dr. Eric Davis, um, in which they discussed the Rear Admiral's knowledge of a private sector black program to reverse engineer alien technology and also his failed attempts to get access to this and other similar programs. My role in the release of the documents, um, well, in short, through a highly unlikely series of events, I was responsible for the Wilson Davis documents finding their way into the public arena. How did this happen? Um, I could probably summarize this by saying that for a long time, I was very active in the US space community and I would make frequent trips from Australia to the US to attend conferences and the like. Uh, at one of these conferences around 2013, um, I met and formed a close relationship with someone whose name I unfortunately can't disclose at his request, um, but who I later learned had developed a very close personal friendship with many of the legendary astronauts, and in particular, the Apollo 14 moonwalker, Dr. Edgar Mitchell. Uh, now, when Edgar Mitchell passed away unexpectedly in February of 2016, uh, my friend was invited by Dr. Mitchell's immediate family to assist in helping disperse his estate. Um, to my friend's surprise, much of Edgar's belongings and documents, which were not of monetary value, were actually going to be dumped. Uh, so with the assistance of one member of Edgar's family, uh, many of his papers and work was thankfully saved and archived into my friend's care. Now, I was fully aware that this was all going on at the time, but I was unaware of what was to follow because sometime after Edgar's funeral, I was contacted by my friend to discuss some of the documents in his position that actually referenced UFOs. Um, my friend was not a UFO guy, but he knew that by... 2018, this was my main field of interest. Uh, this telephone conversation resulted in my asking if I could actually get access to these documents, to which he readily agreed. So this resulted in two lengthy and costly trips to his home over the next 12 months, uh, during which time I was able to copy a number of documents that looked to be of interest, and among these were the Wilson Davis notes. He later agreed to let me release a few of these documents publicly, as long as his name was kept out of it, which I have always honoured. How did I get the documents uh, out into the UIP community? Uh, well, how did this happen? Well, each year I would travel from Australia to the US to assist my friend Paula Harris with her Starworks USA conference in Nevada. Um, in 2018, Grant Cameron was the keynote speaker for this event. Um, the night before the conference finished, I had a sudden idea of showing the documents to Grant simply to get his thoughts on them, as I knew that this kind of information was really his area of expertise. Um, despite my best efforts, I wasn't able to get hold of him until a uh, chance meeting in the hotel lobby the next morning as he was checking out, literally at the hotel door waiting for his pickup. Now, Grant has spoken of this encounter many times, um, but it's true to say that he looked at the first page of the document on my iPad uh, for a few moments. He literally went white and said, where did you get this? I recall Grant calling me from his car a few hours later to say that he has been researching this field for over 40 years, and with our dad, this was the most important document he had ever seen. Now, until that point, I really had no idea of the potential value of um, and importance of, uh, of these documents. How did the documents drop? 
Well, after I eventually gave Grant a copy of the documents, he sat on them for almost six months, not sure what to do with them. He says that uh, for months it kept him awake at night trying to figure out what to do. Um, he eventually told me he was planning to drop them in a book, probably with the names redacted, but in the end, um, even this became too risky. So eventually we just agreed to give them privately to a few other researchers, uh, knowing that eventually they would get out, which of course within weeks they did. When did my name become associated with the documents? Um, well, I actually wanted to remain anonymous uh, in the release of the documents, um, particularly when I gave him the grant, that was one of the conditions that I gave him to him on. Um, but within days of the documents dropping, Australian researcher Keith Basterfield, who actually knew me, contacted me to confirm his suspicion that I was the source of the leak, which I was happy to do as I never had anything to hide. Uh, and then a week later in June 2019, when it was becoming obvious that I couldn't remain anonymous and with pressure building to establish the provenance of the documents, uh, Richard Dolman put out a podcast discussing the documents where he publicly released my name and my role as the source of the documents. And in the same podcast, I was happy to answer a number of questions that he had prepared. I have never had anything to hide other than the name of Edgar's friend. So while I preferred to avoid publicity, I was very happy to put everything on the record. Now, on the same day, Richard Dolan and Keith Basterfield jointly revealed for the first time that the documents had leaked from the estate of the late Edgar Mitchell and that their provenance had been verified. It's word. When did I realize how important these documents were? Well, to be honest, when I first looked through them, I had no idea what was going on. Um, although I was obviously intrigued by the references to secret programs, crash retrievals, NJ-12 and the like, um, I spent months on and off trying to get my head around what, what was in the documents. Uh, it's a very complex story with dozens of players uh, and it spread over several decades. So. It really wasn't an easy thing to try to unpack, um, other than showing it to a couple of very well-informed friends in Australia. I basically just sat on the documents for a year before I decided on the best way to get the documents out into the UAP community for analysis. Do I believe that the Wilson documents are legitimate? Well, at the end of the day, that really is the main question in all of this. Um, the short answer is yes, I do. Uh, I've yet to see any compelling evidence that discredits them. Um, while on the other hand, there is plenty to suggest that they are authentic, even if um, one has to admit that this hasn't been established beyond all doubt. But why do I say this? Um, if you look at the bookends to the story, Firstly, there's no doubt that Admiral Wilson met with Stephen Greer and Edgar Mitchell at the Pentagon in 1997. This is well documented. Uh, at the other end of the story, I can certainly vouch for the fact that these documents were retrieved from Edgar Mitchell's files. Um, I can also vouch for the credibility of the person who obtained the documents from Edgar's files. Uh, at that time, I'd known him closely for five years. We'd met in person many times. Um, well before Edgar Mitchell's death. Uh, I've also known about his close association with Edgar throughout this period. Now, after Edgar died in February 2016, we spoke many times in long telephone conversations uh, about his long and sometimes mind-boggling conversations with Edgar. So to me, this leaves two important questions. Did Eric Davis actually meet with Admiral Thomas Wilson in a car park behind the ETNG building in 2002. Uh, I think there is enough evidence to put this beyond doubt, in my mind at least, uh, especially with the on-record comments from both Edgar Mitchell and Dr. Hal Puthoff, um, which all but confirm this. 
that just leaves the question as to whether the contents of the document are indeed authentic. Um, there is a lot to suggest that they are, and despite the amount of verifiable evidence uh, they contain, and despite some claims to the contrary, there is literally nothing that I'm aware of to suggest that they're fake, beyond Admiral Wilson's obvious and somewhat contradictory denials. Uh, there's been plenty of subtle and nuanced signals coming out from most of the main players uh, involved in the documents, including Eric Davis himself, um, which I find pretty compelling. So from what I've seen, the balance of probabilities lies heavily in favour of the meeting having happened and that the core story contained in the documents is very real. If the documents are authentic, they change the current conversation around disclosure entirely because they reveal that for decades, the US government has retrieved and attempted to reverse engineer technology and craft that the transcript claims are not of this earth, not made by human hands. And equally significantly, this work has been going on illegally in government-funded private hands outside of the reach of government oversight. Another important aspect of the documents is that if true, they totally contradict the emerging US government narrative that they don't know what is behind the sightings, but they do need to be taken seriously and researched, whereas the documents indicate that they may very well have actually had these craft for decades and they may even know what, what they are. <laughs>